Now that I have the full Expeditions and Mud Runner game, it is time for 10 things I have learned so far. Having died enough in Pacific Drive, it was time to take Expeditions and Mud Runner game for a spin. This is the full game I am playing, and yes, this is my own footage, unlike the preview, where we all had to use what Focus Entertainment gave us. As such, this is a more honest look at what to expect from the SnowRunner spin-off from Saber Interactive. I have not had time to play enough for a review, but that is on the way. In the meantime, I thought you might want to see some PC gameplay and hear what I have learned so far. Feel free to ask me anything about expeditions in the comments. Subscribe and like! Following in the footsteps of SnowRunner, which is heavy on DLC, Expeditions a Mudrunner game already has a year one pass. For your hard-earned pennies or equivalent, you get the Kotko Canyon truck I am using right now. Then as we head through 2024 and 2025, you will see Season 1, Season 2, Season 3 and Season 4 content. Each one containing dozens in quotations of new missions, new specialists, new gameplay mechanics and new vehicles and gadgets, but no mention of new maps. Year One content focuses on a buried ancient civilization. Side note, some of expeditions will have you going underground, something you cannot do in old SnowRunner. Now, I was always under the impression co-op was coming to Expeditions and Mudrunner game. That has now been officially confirmed, though we will have to wait. The update, free to all, will arrive later this year, which is vaguer than a vague thing. I suspect that until co-op is fixed in SnowRunner, it makes sense to build anticipation and frame it as free DLC while getting it right, as opposed to launching it broken and endure a backlash. As with SnowRunner, co-op is playable for up to four players. No word if improved communication has been added, but you can share gadgets between players. Something else I noticed in Expeditions is that I really like the new winch system, not wench system. Because you can push and release the line, it gives you greater freedom and control in various situations. Want to use a tree as a safety line when driving close to the edge? Well, now you can be more precise instead of releasing the winch entirely, then reconnecting. Pulling a truck up a hill, you can loosen the line so you can make progress to a grippier spot then wind it in. Speaking of awesome, we have the Don 71. I know it can work in SnowRunner, but it is hardly optimal. In Expeditions, however, its small size, fuel efficiency, nimble steering, chunky tires, and overall versatility can get you far. Actually, all the trucks are pretty good, though you will need to progress through missions to unlock the best upgrades, including roof racks to add spare fuel and repair points, and customization items with additional item slots. Speaking of new things, we have the controls. Though similar-ish to SnowRunner in design and functionality, there is quite a bit new to wrap your head around, including the last of the function menu, which worked well. Now you get LB, your equivalent for applying repairs to specific parts or for topping up fuel, which is cool, as this could be done while driving. However, the gears are therefore RB, or equivalent, and this is backwards from SnowRunner. You can swap this back in the menu, though. What I dislike is that there is a lot of tabbing between menus, and certain functions functions in SnowRunner are now more difficult and less intuitive. It seems like a step back, change for the sake of change, or perhaps to trick us into thinking Expeditions is not just SnowRunner in a different hat. Speaking of other not so cool additions to differentiate the experience, not for the best, are the gadgets and minigames. I like using the binoculars and drone to scout ahead. On these maps, it can be necessary to find the way and preserve fuel. But pressing a button when the line is between two bars is hardly adding much to an off-road driving game, nor is there much enjoyment from steering a top-down drone over a wreckage. I get the idea, but it feels a bit surface deep. Even some written history about the discovery would have been nice. Those familiar SnowRunner constraints are very much present here. You also sometimes have to explore an area, which involves driving around a big circle until you reach 100%. This is not especially rewarding. It 
actually makes me miss those big trailers and meandering mountain trails. Also not so good are the sounds, which appear to be copy and pasted from SnowRunner. If you were expecting improved audio, think again. At least not from the trucks I have had time to unlock so far. Given that there is a greater emphasis on fewer trucks you use more often, it would have been nice to see some new audio recorded. Though sound is often overlooked, it would really help Expeditions and Mudrunner game feel more complete and standalone. At least the visuals seem crispier when viewed on PC. Yes, trees pop in as before, but the sparse terrain seems to run better. I did not get laggy saves, for instance, nor many frame rate drops. Things look pretty great, especially the drier terrain you do not see in SnowRunner. At launch, there are only two proper biomes to explore, as the first appears to be there for training missions and some free roam action. Fortunately, Arizona and the Carpathians are noticeably different. How does Expeditions handle? I want to explore this in more detail, but for now I will say it is a mixed bag. I like the generally slower pace and more methodical approach to success in Expeditions, which the handling model does appear to emphasize. With a greater focus on smaller vehicles, however, you really cannot escape the fact that they are hard to keep straight. Just like in SnowRunner, it seems like every little stone can throw you off course, and rubber tyres slide around more than they should. Tyre grip does, however, seem better on rock. At least, something is making rock crawling more possible, especially with adjustable... Tyre pressures! Yes, this is not a gimmick. Using a low gear and reducing the air in your tyres really can get you out of a pickle. For tackling steep inclines with rocks, it is invaluable, as you do not get enough traction without. Just remember to re-add pressure when going fast or risk damage. Or try to get by with the medium pressure setting, which does also increase fuel consumption, but is a good mix of grip and damage resilience. Buying expeditions on PC, I shall now show you the minimum and recommended specs. If you buy via Epic, be sure to add a tribe called Cars into the creator tag to give me a few extra pennies I can spend on biscuits and amphetamines. Until my next expeditions video, take care, subscribe and like, bye.